and welcome to Steelers of Ireland Talking Steel episode 1. Um, this is something we put together for uh, our small island of Ireland and uh, it's going to be consist of some episodes of Steel Talk with some of our very famous and friendly Irish Steel players. I'm Ryan Turner, this is my good friend Jonathan Milligan hey. and for episode 1 we're bringing along to this documentary our good friend Mr Ted Nesbitt, Mr Steel Guitar of Ireland. You're very welcome along Ted. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. <coughs> very good. Ted, um, as you know, this is a, it's a casual, what we're doing here is a very casual thing. Um, myself and Jonathan, we're, we're long friends of yourself for, for, for a long number of years. So we felt, um, due to several reasons, we, we thought you were the ideal man to, to open this uh, small documentary that we're doing on, on Steve Talk in Ireland. And, uh, because everybody in the country knows you. You've been, you've yes, been, I've been around for a while. You've been around for a while, <laughs> and uh, you've been, you've been the rock uh, and the pillar of Steve guitars in Ireland. You've, uh, you've been the gentleman that everybody goes to. Yes, yes. Tell, tell us. <clears throat> well, I can remember going away back to the early seventies, and I think at that time there was probably only three active steel players in the whole of Ireland. Right. You had, one was an Englishman, Basil Hendricks, yeah. Yeah. who was living in Dublin. And we had Artie McGlynn from yeah. Oma. That's right. Great player. Yeah. Declan Ernie. That's right, yeah. Also <laughs> a great player from <laughs> County Longford. Yeah. Yeah. And, and from Belfast, a guy called Max Callowood, yeah, who sure. played with the California Breakmen. Sure. Yeah. And they were really the only, well that's four of them, but three Irish guys and one Englishman. Yeah. And, and that was it. That yeah. was all the steel players there was. Today, wow, we got, we got a great bunch of guys here. Like we start great, great players, yeah. including Mr. Milligan <laughs> and of course yourself. Well, <laughs> one of the upcoming stars of the steel. <laughs> can, can I interrupt you? Were you playing steel at that stage as well? I was a great lover of pedal steel. But I never had one. Right. In fact, in fact, the very first time I ever seen a pedal steel in the in the wood was at the Linfield Football Club in on, in Belfast. Wow! And Maxie Callowood yeah. was playing with a band there, and someone told me that it was a country band playing at this club, and he had a pedal steel guitar, and I thought I got to see this. So we went down <laughs> to the club, and anyway, we were the first ones in. <laughs> The band arrived and he set up the guitar and there was this little Fender 400. I want to ask you, was it a Fender? It yeah. was a beautiful guitar. And I got to know Maxie Callowood and him and I become great friends. And we said great friends until his passing. But um, I then decided at a later stage that Maxie was selling that guitar and, and I, ended up, I bought it. Very good. <laughs> but I only had it a short time when someone knew that I had bought it. And they come and offered uh -huh. me double the money. Where it all started. So I stole it. <laughs> and that was the start of my venture into buying and selling. You have to be careful with the revenue guys are watching this as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, so Ted, are you saying uh, right up until the, the recent day you've still been doubling your money in pedal steel? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, I can, I can remember when. when uh, after selling the guitar, and then I bought a showbud from someone else, and, and it sold fairly quickly. And then I thought to myself, there's a gap in the marketplace here. Yeah. And yeah. I've done a little survey around the music stores in Northern Ireland. Yeah. No one, but no one had a pedal steel guitar for sale. You know? So I thought this is something I'm going to pursue here, and which I did. And uh, you know the rest of the story, you know. Well, yeah. well Ted, is this, is this in the 80s or the 70s? This was, this was, the, 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 now we're into the 70s. In the 70s, you know, yeah. yeah. So it was quite early. And, uh, yeah. It's and the then, then really around sort of 60, right. 70 years, I suppose, too. Yeah. So. Uh, and then, about 1984, I got to the situation where people were coming to me looking for guitars, and I thought, I better knuckle down and learn how to play one of these things. <laughs> because yeah. they want a demonstration. demonstration. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, that was the start of another journey. Brilliant. Um, from then on, 
I then put, I remember putting a, a, an advert into the Belfast Telegraph, and I put an advert into the Dublin, I think it was the Evening Standard, and the, and the, the advert read, pedal steel guitars bought, sold and exchanged, yeah. and my phone started jumping. Really? Really, and there was guys who were in the show band business yeah. for it's years true. and years, yeah. and had bought a pedal steel. But by this time, the, 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 show band, the show band had sort of fizzled out. Of course. Yeah. And the guitars were lying on their beds. And I ended up buying about six or seven of these little show band guitars, you know. So there, Rainbow Music was born? That's correct. Yeah, very good. And, um, and we just went on from there. Yeah. And then in 1991, I think it was, I was in St. Louis, Missouri. And I was approached by the Mullen Guitar Company if I would like to be brilliant, yeah. uh, a distributor for their instruments yeah. in, in Ireland and GB, which I did. And uh, since then, the, the country's been sort yeah. of flooded with Mullen there's guitars. A lot of Mullen, yeah, there's a lot of Mullen guitars around. And, uh, and obviously, <coughs> that, was, that was transitioned into a European market as well, didn't it? You saw, yes, you well, now guitars. that Mullen has got. Mullen is probably probably the foremost guitar now in the US and uh, since then they have got a dealer in England, right. they've got a dealer in Denmark, they've got a dealer in, in Finland, Peter, Peter yeah. in Newland. Yeah. Yeah, Peter, yeah. And um, <coughs> so they've spread their wings over Europe, you know. So. Yeah. And just, you just, just moving back a small bit again to um, it's fair to say, you know, you're, you're certainly, when I, through the years, and uh, I haven't been a steel player, I've been playing piano, as, 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 as you know, in bands for 20 plus years, but um, anybody ever I knew looking for pedal steels, and uh, it, was, it was always Ted Nesbitt, it was always the name that come to mind, but there was one other guy that had a music shop in Galway, the late... Uh, oh, yes! The yeah. late Mike Kane, and uh, there's Pat, a... Pat Cunningham. Pat Cunningham shop in Galway. Pat and Cunningham had a... You did supply them. He had a little store called Back to Music. Back to Music, yeah. And I remember one time Pat gave me a call and he said, I believe you're the man who wheels and deals and steals. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. That's by another way. story, yeah. <laughs> and I said, yes, that's correct. He says, I could do with a couple of guitars. I've got a great salesman down here, Mike Keane, yeah. who was a lovely guy. And you built up a great, great player. You built up yeah. a great relationship with, with Mike. And Keane. I said, yes, I have some guitars for sale. But to cut a long story short, he, he bought, I think, five guitars off me that time. And I said, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, for the price, for the price of the fuel, I'll I'll take them down to Galway myself in the car. Very good. Um, which I did do, and I spent the day with Mike Keane, and and. Uh, that was a, that was one of my biggest sales. Yeah, at that's, time, you know? that's, that's that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Yeah. Through the years, um, not alone have you been selling guitars, you've been doing service jobs, repairs, yes. and of course, uh, of course, you've helped people out lots, of lots people. of times. Yeah. Yes, I can remember well, some of our greats. I, I can remember one incident. Uh, one of our great players, Stephen Smith, was playing in the south of England. And I got an SOS call from Stephen. I'm in big trouble. What's, what's wrong with Stephen? <laughs> the, oh, a pedal is broken on my guitar. <clears throat> I'm doing a gig tonight and I'll struggle through, but I need another guitar for. We're playing in on Saturday night in uh, Isle of Wight. Oh, right. I need a guitar for the Isle of Wight. It's a big deal. Yeah. Now this was on a Thursday, he says, can you get a guitar to me? So he had a friend who worked for TNT, which yeah. is now FedEx. Yeah. And through his friend and, 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 and my determination to get a guitar to him, <laughs> on, Friday, on Saturday night, he was playing a derby. Wow. And his own guitar was on, his broken guitar was on the way back to me. And by the time the, the job was over, and, and his tour was over and he got back into Ireland again, I had his guitar repaired for him oh. and everyone was happy. Oh, brilliant. And Stephen's always so, so 
he just remember the incident, you know, was yeah. so grateful for the help, yeah. you know. There's well, another there's another story I remember you tell me one time um, about our great friend Sarah Jory, where you oh, had to you had to come to the rescue on a magnum, is that right? Yes, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah also <laughs> broke a pedal, believe it or not. Yeah. And she was playing with Van Morrison at the time. And she called me the night before and said, I'm in big trouble here. I said, what's the matter? I'm in Bangor, Northern Ireland, and I've broken a pedal. We got a rehearsal in the morning, and Van is going to be there. Oh. I need to have this <laughs> repair. Okay. So I got on the phone to John Fabian from Carter Guitars. Yeah because of the time difference, they were still there. And I says, John, I wanted to do a job for Sarah's guitar, told him the story. Tell me what tools I need. I don't want to go and find that I haven't got the tools that I need to repair it. So we said, you need this, you need that, you need the other thing, you need a pedal, of course. And off I went the following morning. I was in Bangor at nine o'clock the following morning, repaired the guitar. Sarah arrived at 20 past, Ten or so, there's a guitar ready, and she was so grateful. Over the moon, I would say so. Yeah, mm -hmm. big time. Yeah. Every, but you, you actually would have uh, like hired equipment too to big stars, like yes, yes, like I've, I know. I, I've, the, yes, I've rented gear out to. I've rented gear out to the last one. Actually, was to um, the guy who plays steel for, did play for Randy Travis. What do you call him? Steve Hansen. Steve Hansen. Yeah. Rented stuff off me. Yeah. Um, I rented stuff for Toby Keith band. Yeah, and you told me about Corky Owens. Corky Owens, he, he's a member of yes, this group. Actually, right. with Gene yeah. Watson. Yeah, he, he was a he was a day player, but he had only a Corky Owens. Yeah, Corky Owens brought a guitar over from Texas for me, and it was one that was awarded for Stephen Hamilton. A Rains. Oh, a Rains. Right, a Rains guitar. Yeah, I could tell you a, a story about that one. And Stephen, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Stephen, Stephen has seen this guitar of Corky's and, and said to me, could you order me a guitar like a, exactly the same colour, the same height? And, and I said, yeah, I could do that. So I ordered a guitar for him. And um, uh, about, a, about a week or two before Gene Watson was due to come to, to come here. I got a call from from Gary um, Carlander to say the guitar is ready, and he said, "If you want, Corky can take it over, use it for the show, oh, and then pass it on to you." And I thought that would be super duper. <laughs> so anyway, the only thing was Corky played day setup. Sure. And Steve, he played Eminem yeah, setup. Yeah, back to front. But Corky brought the guitar over, and he'd done five shows with Gene Watson, playing the wrong way round. Wow. Well, <laughs> and never something. missed a note. Never missed a note. Well, that's that. For me, I think that's one of the things about about great players in general, um, because uh, Corky's obviously a wonderful player, oh, as, as as we know, and it's, it's a funny thing. Earlier. <coughs> I suppose uh, we're into January 2023 now, but um, in May of last year, when Sarah came over for a few days and, and she stayed here with me in my home, um, Sarah's all, also a day player, yes. as you know, and uh, we were going through some of my steals and I had said to Sarah she had never had the opportunity, and all the years she'd been playing, she never had the opportunity of playing a push-pull. So um, I set up this old girl here, and Sarah Jory sits in behind it, and being a day player, and man, with inside five minutes, she frightened the hell out of me. The stuff she was playing at this guitar, <laughs> <laughs> it was just amazing. And I'm like, you know, um, your your setup's completely different, and it's, it's 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 just incredible. It's just great players like Corky, you know, they can they seem to be able to adapt very easily. Ted, yes, yeah, seem to be seem to be able to. Now, Ted, I I often have a uh, often wonder, and I've never had a, a personal chance to sit down. And we're good friends, and I do ask you a lot of questions. But, um, and I'm going to put you in the spot actually. Go on. Um, <laughs> you've, you're probably the only person I know, you've had every guitar that man and God invented through your hands yes. at some given time. You've, you've had them all. And I know, I know you, you, you always, you tell me you're, you're a big Mullen fan. Very much you're so. Ver, you're, you're very much a Mullen man at heart. But, 
Is there anything else out there that has gone through your hands? Because I know you've played them all, from Franklin's to Infinity's to you name it, the, the zones. As a matter of fact, the one that Jonathan said, most of the guitars probably in this room came from you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, um, is there anything that you regret? Or is there any one guitar that stands out in your mind that you think, man, I should never have sold that? That's a, that's a tricky one. Uh, yes, there has been a couple of very nice guitars that I've owned. Like, for instance, we spoke earlier on about the, about the LDG that come from, uh, sure. come from Jerry Hogan's shop. Yeah. And um, it was a very rare guitar with a metal neck. And uh, was, <coughs> that, was that the guitar that said belonged to the late Henry McCullough? That's right. Yeah. And, and I sold it, and, and I suppose in foresight I should have held on to it, you know, yeah. but, you know, you can't keep them all. Yeah. What was special about that guitar, Ted? The, the looks of it, the feel of it, the playability of it, it was just a wonderful instrument, you right. know. Okay. And condition-wise, it was as new. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful guitar. Yeah. Yeah. But, of course, um, of course, Henry McCullough played with Paul McCartney. Uh, he played with Paul and McCartney and Wings at that time. That's wings, right. Yeah, yeah, and he had he had the steel. But mm -hmm. all in all, <coughs> I currently play. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I currently play a Mullen Royal Precision know, with do. four and five, and I, I I just wouldn't swap it for anything. You love your Mullins. I love yeah. my Mullin yeah. guitar. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Well, that's good. That's but you, you mentioned St. Louis there. Um, you bound have met all the great, great players over the years, uh, but I think I remember you telling me you were sitting at a bar and you didn't realise you'd been sitting sitting beside Mr. Steel Guitar himself. Maybe you could tell that story. Uh, Buddy Emmons was sitting beside you. Yes, I, actually, there's a couple of photographs that I give to uh, Ryan. Yeah. <coughs> of Buddy Emmons. We were sitting in the bar in in St. Louis in in the uh, uh, the hotel. And I said to Jim King and a friend of mine, I'm pretty sure, <coughs> excuse me, I'm pretty sure that's Buddy Emmons sitting up at the bar, up at the bar. And just as I had done that, I had my camera there and, and Buddy turned around and just as he turned around, I took a photograph of him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I, and then we had, we, we spent some time talking. He was a lovely man to speak to, really was. And I also then had the opportunity to spend an afternoon with Lloyd Green. Oh, yes. wow. We were we that same we left St. Louis, went down to Nashville, and when we got to Nashville, we booked into a Motel Six. And I said to Jim King, and I'm going to call Lloyd Green. And I picked up the phone, and I phoned Lloyd's number, and by George, who answered the phone, Lloyd Green. <laughs> and I told him who it was and uh, would love to meet and he says well today I have got a I've got something set up already and, and we'll, we'll have to make it another day and I said okay that's fine I'm staying at the Motel 6 and told him the location of it and we were just about to leave the room on the phone room yeah. and I picked it up and it was Lloyd again he says that appointment I had has now been cancelled so I can meet you guys and he come over to the hotel Wow. And spent the whole afternoon with wow. us, and that's it's all on a CD. The the, the whole conversation. Which yeah, which which we will we, we will put yeah. online for, <coughs> for our yeah. friends and viewers to to. Uh, and uh, Lloyd Green is one of the most interesting people you could speak to. Very articulate speaker, oh, you know. Yeah. And um, what a player! He's a player. member of Mensa. He's got a memory like an elephant. You remember <laughs> everything. He can nearly tell you what he. What he had for his dinner in 1964, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, lovely guy. He's really a, a, and such such a fabulous player. At that, yeah. I've often looked at things and, and seen. Whereas Lloyd's his companion, his guitar is 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 not all that. You know, he, he doesn't have a a lot of modern day moves or anything at all. No. But he's 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 a fabulous man for the for the bar for stance. The bar stance. And yes. It's just yes. it's just a technique. <clears throat> He, does, he doesn't lower string four. No. 
Yeah. Um, he uses string too as an alternative to it, you know. Yeah, he's great. So, yeah. Ted, you, you, you've met, going to St. Louis, you've met some fabulous people. Is there anything in particular that stands out in your mind the most? Any great moments? I'm sure, I'm sure there's loads of them. Yeah, I remember the, 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 one of the last times I was there, uh, I had a video camera with me and I went round most of the players that I could sort of corner mm -hmm. and ask them for a little interview. And I have that actually on a video yeah. where I spoke with Tom Brumley. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, the Moon. Oh, yeah. Ralph Moody. Ralph Moody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the Hawaiian man, Jerry, Jerry Bird. Jerry Bird, yeah, uh, sure. Jimmy Day. Wow. Hal Rowe. Wow. Uh, I got all those guys on video. Uh, Larry Sasser. You've had the pleasure of their company. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's something so, special. Oh yeah. That yeah. Is. I don't think there's anybody else in Ireland or maybe Europe who could <laughs> no. say that, is there? It's, uh, it's a wonderful <laughs> thing, Paddle Steel Ted, and, and you'll, I'm sure you'll agree. I'm a piano player, as, as, as I've stated, and, and most people know, but I don't know any other instrument that can bring people together like Paddle Steel. We, where does it be piano player conventions? <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's true. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, it's 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 such a wonderful, wonderful instrument, and and it has there's a great community of really good people uh, that that enjoys it, that loves it, and you know, and and it's like putting this together. When I spoke to Jonathan originally about doing this, um, he was totally like myself. He, he thought it was a great idea. Yeah. Um, and you know anybody that I've contacted yourself, you had to you had to make a, a two and a half hour drive to come here today mm -hmm. to, to be with us. But you know uh, where else and what other line of work or or fun could could you do that with people? Yes, you know, there's just a great community of people mm -hmm. in, in the state of guitar world. You know. Well, I can remember meeting you way 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 back. We must know each other now. Twenty five years. Twenty five years, Ted. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And and you were you were crazy about steel guitar those days. I was. Yeah. Even though you did, you weren't playing those days. I wasn't. But no. you were you were crazy about pedal steel. I've been very and, lucky. And, and I can remember on a couple of occasions where I was always on the lookout for a bargain to buy a steel guitar, <laughs> and so was he. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's in the cross <laughs> and, 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 oh yes, yes, yes. Well, and I, I beat him. I beat him to the. I beat him to the to the line on a couple of occasions. He did. He certainly did. I yeah. bid. <laughs> yeah, he certainly did. Oh, yeah, uh, it, it would be twenty five years, and I think my interest. I've been fortunate that I've got to work in some really good bands in this country in Ireland, and I've always been sharing the stage with a good steel guitarist. Yes. You know, all the bands I've played in, you know, uh, I have been have been lucky. There's always been a good player in the band, you know, and and uh, and that's that's what brought my love. Uh, for steel, uh, it's just here for me. Country music isn't country unless there's a steel guitar there, you know. Mm -hmm. Ted, um, getting back to you, um, you know, you've we just as, as you just talked, Lloyd Green, Buddy Emmons, um, you Ron Lashley, Lashley, yeah. yes, Ron Lashley. I only met the man once and I met him in St. Louis. And someone said to me, that's Ron Lashley sitting there, he was a big guy. Oh, he was a huge guy. <laughs> he was one of these sort of guys, you pick up, <laughs> grab two chairs and sit down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I went over to him and I thought, I'm going to introduce myself to Ron Lashley because I bought a guitar off him for my, I had imported a guitar into South Africa for Cez Adams. Sure. Cez Adams, right? Yeah. Which you lived in South Africa, I, did, I lived in South Africa. I imported the first pedal steel guitar into South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> and I went over to Long Lashley and I said, Mr. Lashley. And he said, Man, it's a long time since anyone called me Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Well, my name is Ted Nesbitt. I'm from Northern Ireland. And I remember I bought a guitar for you while I was living in South Africa. And he said, I remember that one. He says, I often wondered, was he a white man or a black man? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, with a name like Nesbitt? <laughs> very good. Uh, anyway, that's that's my, that was my meeting with Ron Lashley. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, very, very, good. Um, very good, Ted. Ted, there's something, there's something um, myself and Jonathan talked about, and, and, and 
through the Steelers of Ireland, we felt um, you're a long serving member of the Steel Guitar World mm -hmm. and the Steel Guitar community. And uh, you've been, as I said earlier, you've been the rock, you've been the pillar of pedal steels. You've kept most players going when there was problems uh, and everything. And uh, we decided to, a little something. Jonathan will, will, will continue on with what? I suppose. Uh we talked about this several times, and it's not it's not much. And it's, I don't know how qualified I am to be to be presenting it to you, but it's, it's been a, a great honour knowing you over the years, and, and, and well, you're going to continue to keep keep us all supplied with uh, with, with, with steel guitars. But we that. just got this wee thing made for you, and hopefully you'd appreciate where we're coming from and yeah. how much to show how much we appreciate what you've been doing for us for over us, the years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean us, I mean all the steel guitar community throughout yeah. Ireland and. Even part well, of Europe. And gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> I really am. That's a lovely gesture. Yes, yes. You might turn it around for the camera. And, Thank and, you. And, and Seamus, our cameraman here, will. will uh, it's just a little uh, small thing we got made. <laughs> Token. Yeah. So, and nobody deserves it more. No. Well, thank you yeah. very, very it's, much. It's, it's I'll, I'll, that, really will be, that will be, uh, that will be set in my music room. And for, for all to see, along with That's your lovely man, along Thanks. with your other memorabilia. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's, that was lovely. It's little, it's very little. Oh, for us. Nice. So we do appreciate all. We the yeah, we certainly do. Without Ted Nesbitt, <laughs> we, we the, the the steel guitar community would be uh, and world in this country would be a different place. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Nice words, you yeah. Thank very you good. so much. Now, Ted, we're going to put you in the spot. Would you like to play us something? Ah, uh, take that off. You get us. Uh, you might need a wee bit of glue and that at some stage, but it says it's leave us portable for you, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no. I'm going to play just maybe a verse off. Love it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's a little longer called Jealous Heart. Jealous Heart, lovely. to uh, I suppose a close on episode one of our Steel Talk. Yeah. Um, I would like to say thank you very much My pleasure. for coming up and joining us. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks again. Uh, <coughs> it says, I'm sure there's, there's another few hours in there yet. Maybe we get, episode, we get part two another time. Sure. Right. But, uh, yeah. but here, thank you. It's great. Thanks. Thanks a million. Good stuff. Signing off episode one with <laughs> Mr. Ted Nesbitt. Thank you very much. <coughs>